What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you some of my favorite supplies that I use to grow mushrooms. I basically use Amazon for everything that I need, so I'll leave links in the description with the supply list. To start off, this nutrient agar powder makes the best agar plates that I've ever used and I've had a lot of problems using other brands. They are great for germinating spores, cloning fresh mushrooms, and storing your mushroom cultures. I use these sterilized disposable scalpels to make my transfers on agar plates. I like the convenience and the assurance of clean transfers. I use that roll of parafilm to seal my agar plates after inoculation. And these media bottles are great for pouring the agar into the petri dishes. They have a ring at the top that prevents dripping when pouring the agar. Next I wanted to show you the modified lids that I make using RTV silicone. I've made thousands of lids using RTV silicone over the years and honestly I'll never switch to anything else. I even started to use two injection ports on each lid so that I could get double the amount of inoculations which from one port you usually get around 5 to 10 before it starts to fall apart. And I usually use two layers of micropore tape to cover the fresh air exchange hole but you can use these synthetic filter discs as well. They're hydrophobic so that means the water won't soak into the filter. This is the tube of high temp RTV silicone that I use for my injection ports. And this metal hole puncher comes in really handy when you're making a lot of lids. You can use the silicone on brown rice flour jars, liquid culture jars, grain jars, and even bags. I've always just used micropore tape for my liquid culture jars, but you just have to be careful that the liquid doesn't splash up and hit the filter. And these are the metal jar lids that I use. If you want to grow mushrooms in filter patch bags, there's really no way around getting a quality impulse sealer. I started off using this small impulse sealer and the track started coming off but I ended up fixing it by unscrewing those screws and then uh, fixing that but it ended up being a little bit too small for um, like five pound substrate bags um, so I ended up getting this one which is the perfect size and it's higher quality. And one of the most important tools is a pressure cooker or a sterilizer. They are used to sterilize the liquid culture media, agar mix, grain spawn, and substrate. The only way to get around using a pressure cooker is to use corn as a grain spawn because you can just steam sterilize that in a canning pot. And instead of sterilizing supplemented sawdust as substrate, you can pasteurize some straw with boiling water. I'd say the most reliable and best sterilizer in my possession is the Presto 23 core on the left. If you have been following my channel closely, you'll remember that I had problems with a mysterious cloudy sediment happening in my liquid culture. And that was actually the all-american sterilizer in the middle that was causing that up next is my old reliable magnetic stir plate i've had this one for like five or six years and it's still going strong i use magnetic stir bars in my liquid culture to help break up the mycelium I use this regular food dehydrator to dry my mushrooms so that I can make medicinal mushroom tea or if I have any leftover gourmet mushrooms I can dehydrate those. It can fit a good amount of mushrooms and it usually takes around 14 hours for a full load to dry. 
Another one of my favorite machines to use is a Harvest Right freeze dryer. A freeze dryer is great for drying mushrooms at a low temperature to preserve the quality. I also found that it was perfect for turning mushroom extract liquid into a powder. If you're someone who has a weak stomach and can't drink medicinal mushroom tea, this is a great way that you can powderize it and put it into capsules. This is another one of my machines that I use to make my medicinal mushroom powdered extract. It's called the Source Turbo by Extract Craft and it's a vacuum distillation machine. If you soak the medicinal mushrooms in high proof alcohol, you can distill off the alcohol and leave behind the medicinal oil and then you can reuse the alcohol for more extractions. It's a little pricey at around, I think it was $500 or something, but for someone who really loves making extracts, this is a perfect machine. I buy my culture slant tubes from a company called Celtree on Amazon. I use these to transfer my first generation mushroom cultures to for long-term storage. The agar is poured into the tubes and then they are pressure sterilized and then allowed to cool down on a slant. The agar is thicker in a culture slant than it is on an agar plate and usually what happens with an old agar plate is the thin layer of agar starts to shrivel up and dry out. Whereas the thick agar in a culture slant will last a lot longer before drying out. This is the microscope that I use to view spores and mycelium up close. The brand is Amscope and it is pretty quality and I bought it on Amazon. A fruiting chamber is important if you want to grow mushrooms, you're going to need to provide them with the correct environment. I converted this 5 tier greenhouse into a fruiting chamber by adding a humidifier and a humidistat, as well as an exhaust fan. It's a great all around fruiting chamber and I've grown a lot of different varieties in here. I have a video tutorial on how I built it, so I'll make sure to link that down in the description. And finally, if you need a larger space to grow mushrooms in, this 10x10 grow tent is a perfect option. All you have to do is add some shelves, a light strip, the humidifier, a fresh air exchange fan, and an exhaust fan. So that was basically all of my favorite mushroom cultivation supplies. I'll make sure to leave all of the links in the description and I hope this video helped you guys figure out what tools you need to start your mushroom growing journey.